Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and in this episode, we are back under the car making some more covers and bash plates. All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, those of you who are watching previously will have seen last week that I built this uh, bash plate to go underneath the Alferrari. Uh, if you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can check that out and catch up. And um, if you haven't subscribed, think about uh, subscribing and uh, hitting that bell. It does help us out. Now, getting back to this bash plate, uh, there were a few comments about it um, that I'd like to address. One of the first ones was some of the people were saying, why did I attach it to this sort of flimsier part of the lower valance and not to the stronger part of the frame? And that is more to give it a little bit of give. There's not a lot, but there's a bit of give. So that if this does hit something hard, it can potentially bend these tabs. There's still a bit of room to move and um, it will bend tabs rather than um, if you mount it solidly, that force has to go somewhere and it can buckle other things further up, much more dangerous and more damaging than uh, what this is. So this should be nice and solid for what it is. Another one was, um, why didn't I use, there's like a factory slash aftermarket um, bash guard that's available for the original Alfa Romeos. Couple of reasons why I didn't use that. Um, a, I don't have a regular Alfa Romeo engine anymore. So the, the regular uh, engine has this sump that's sort of quite large and sits all the way sort of forward. The sump in the standard Alfa has uh, fins on it. So the, uh, the bash guard is sort of strips of metal. Now, um, it was, would have been big and sort of uh, and, and ugly and unnecessary on this engine. Um, this is much more sleek. It's much better aerodynamically. And um, that was another thing. A lot of people were saying, do I need to put holes in it to, uh, get, uh, to cool the sump of the Ferrari? No, you don't. Uh, the Ferrari 360 standard had a flat bottom underneath it, like most of these modern supercars these days for aerodynamics. Obviously, they have a completely sealed flat bottom. They don't have... Um, flow over the sump. It doesn't really have a sump anyway. It's a dry sump engine, as we know. That's why I built my um, external dry sump tank. And uh, it's got the oil cooler that goes up through here. Uh, and one of the other things that people were mentioning was, does, does my sway bar still fit? And yes, it does. So the sway bar is mounted up and it actually sits up above this plate through uh, sort of behind here and uh, and it comes out and pass. So the, uh, the sway bar fits fine. There's no problems with that. I did check it and uh, made sure I didn't miss out on that. So I think we've covered it. Uh, I'm quite happy with it. No, I don't really need to put holes in it. Uh, oh, another one was why I didn't make it out of aluminium. Um, I probably could have, although I would have wanted to make it thicker. This is strong. Yes, it's heavy. It's not insanely heavy, but it's heavy enough. Um, also, um, Aluminium is quite brittle in the fact that if it got a hit, it could potentially punch through um, if, if I hit sort of something smaller, whereas this would dent and actually stay together. So I think it works better as a bash plate than aluminium. That said, aluminium would work, um, but I made it out of steel. So uh, it's only 1.6 mil thick. It's not, uh, it's not super, star super strong, whereas 1.6 mil aluminium would be a little bit flimsy. So I'd have to go bigger and yeah, anyway. Moving on, let's uh, go back and see what we're going to tackle today. Okay, so I've sort of set the camera up so you can sort of see the flow of uh, the underside of the car. So this is the bash plate I built last week. This is the cross member that's already there as part of the car. And then you've got this steering rack, which sits a little bit lower. So this is uh, one of the mounts on this side, the other mount on the other side. And um, in particular, there's sort of the base of the knuckle of the, uh, the steering rack is just here. And that's probably the lowest point. This bracket is a little bit big. I'll probably trim it when I built it. Um, yeah, I've sort of, it's, this one sits a little bit prouder than what this one does. <clears throat> what one of the viewers brought up that um, I have noticed but didn't actually ever uh, pay any attention to it is apparently with aerodynamics. Again, I'm just reading from one of the comments. I'm not sure if it's uh, how accurate it is, but uh, a lot of these car under trays actually have a little vertical flap at the back edge of it. And apparently what that does is um, it's like a gurney flap. So basically it hits and, uh, and, and directs the air around. And I believe it helps uh, drag air over the top through the, uh, the engine bay of the car going through the, um, the grills and stuff like that. So it helps to sort of pull 
the air back out through. And uh, what I'm thinking is um, doing something like that could really actually help my situation here. So what I'm thinking is I'm actually, it's not gonna be a, um, a just a straight flap. I'm thinking I'm actually gonna use some of this uh, square tubing to work for two purposes. Is one is act as a bit of a, uh, a bash guard for this steering rack. So it's not going to cover over the steering rack, but I can weld it on so that it sits lower than the lowest point in the steering rack. So this is gonna hit first. So it's sort of slightly sacrificial. It works as that gurney flap, as well as uh, adds extra bracing to this cross member underneath. So it has multiple duties. I think that is gonna be the best way to sort of cover this stuff up without making the uh, without making the car too much lower at the front. I mean, obviously it's already um, uh, probably got a little bit uh, less ground clearance underneath than it originally had with this exhaust and stuff, which does sit lower again than this front center brace. So I'm not super worried about this. The exhaust, if it hits, hit, exhaust hit, uh, you know, there is a reasonable amount of clearance at my ride height. I checked, I've got over a hundred millimeters, what, four inches underneath the car before anything hits at, you know, a comfortable ride height. So there is plenty of clearance. Anyway, let's uh, chop out a piece of this square tubing now and uh, see if we can clean this up and get ready to weld it in. So I've just put the steering rack back in and you can see I've boxed in this whole area here so it's all sealed in from the back. There are a couple of little holes I'm gonna to have to fill in when I get this on the rotisserie. But um, we have the steering rack mounted. If I just go over on this angle here so you can sort of see that this bottom corner hangs down just enough to protect this nub here. So there's, there's a few mil of height there just to protect on the, uh, the frontal edge as it sw swoops down. That is the lowest point, yes, uh, except for the exhaust further on, but uh, it will give me that extra bit of protection for that steering rack. All right, so now I have the bash guard set up under the car. I need to start moving forward and protecting some of the other bits that obviously need protection from uh, wheels and tires and grot, etc. So the, uh, the first thing I'm gonna be concerned about is this dry sump oil tank line. So it comes from the engine through this front guard and it needs to connect to the bottom of this dry sump oil tank. Now, you may have seen a little while ago, I built this uh, sort of protection panel for the, uh, the dry sump tank. So the dry sump tank has got a guard cover on it, but uh, the, uh, the hose does not. And obviously the hose is quite vulnerable. And as part of that as well, I'll, uh, I still got to work out exactly how I'm going to do things, but I need to also reinforce and I'll build a cover over my braking system. So there's the master cylinders here. This all needs a cover over the, uh, the sort of the, the shaft, the, the braking shaft, and also the clutch. I need to build a cover for that. I need to protect this hose, but I also need to be able to get this hose covered coming through here. Now this panel here, I couldn't cut a hole in it because this is actually one of the weakest parts of the car. They're known to uh, potentially crack through these holes. This is where originally the steering box was mounted. So these holes are now redundant. So I can weld that all up and uh, I am going to be reinforcing this. But to start with, 
We just need to get this hose reconnected, which means trimming out a little bit of this bodywork here because uh, I weld this panel on after I sort of uh, fabricate all this hose and stuff. But now we have the wheel in place. There is actually quite a bit more room than I thought to run the hose through so uh, I can make a guard up and uh, still not interfere with the wheel travel. All right, I did a little bit of rough trimming to get the lower fitting onto the oil tank. Um, basically, the, uh, the wheel arch flare covers 90% of it. There's a little bit of the fitting that sticks out the bottom, but uh, what I want to do now is build a cover that covers over this all the way along to protect this from any stuff being flicked up by the tire. Now, there is room for the tire to travel in there, so I've double checked all that. So my current thought is to use some offcuts of exhaust to make a curved sort of section to sit in here to uh, sort of cup over and cover this and then travel backwards so it can, it can link in and, uh, and cover up some other bits in here as well. So I want to sort of make one panel that probably covers over the master cylinders and the uh, um, oil line. That's the current plan. Let's start uh, cutting and pasting bits and pieces and see what we come up with. All right, so I uh, started butchering the exhaust I made for Harry a while ago that didn't work the way I wanted it to. So uh, I'm reutilizing some of those uh, bends, etc. And I've sort of just tucked together this initial piece. It's very rough, but this fits in place over this uh, pipe. And that is the front edge of my cover that I need to make up. It fits, the wheel clears, what I think I'm going to do is I, I need to make, build sort of a, uh, a piece that curves around and joins up to the, the body of the car along here that I can sort of attach on around here somewhere. And then we'll worry about the underside afterwards. Okay, so the uh, top panel is now in. I've sort of folded it up and managed to get it to follow reasonably closely to where I need it. Um, there's a little bit more to do on this corner. When the, uh, the wheel arch comes in, I need to sort of integrate it all so it all sits in there nicely. Um, but uh, now I'm going to go underneath and see if we can start working out a cover for those master cylinders. All right, that was a whole lot of CAD um, designing up this cover. There is gonna be water and grot that's gonna be able to get into it. It's, there's no way it can be a completely sealed unit. It's mostly to protect uh, a lot of the workings in there, but I'm gonna have to drill holes in it, etc. when I make it uh, out of steel so that it can drain and any of the bits and pieces can get out that get in. But I'm still trying to make it so it works and it blocks out most of the stuff before it even gets in there. So uh, I've got my cardboard template, as you can see here. It uh, goes all the way around. Let's take it off and cut it out and start folding it up.
All right, well, uh, that was a lot of fabricating, but I've built my under tray. So, um, yeah, a bit of folding and sort of, yeah, odd shapes around the edges. But with a little bit of um, finessing, that will fit quite nicely. So it's a, uh, it's a big tray. It sits higher than the exhaust. Uh, that's going to help shield brake lines that are under here. It covers over them. Um, it's, uh, it's also going to work as a, uh, a heat shield for the master cylinders. It's also going to stop dirt and grot, etc., getting in there. Fabrication to do on it. They're still uh, making tabs. I need to work out whether I'm going to join it up to this uh, sort of oil line protector or what I'm going to do. So, And my microphone has gone again. So I think that means it's time for Fun Facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, 1952 was a very busy year for Ferrari. Amongst all of the other cars released was also the 225S sports racing car. These cars featured a 2.7 litre Colombo V12 that benefited from all of the research that Aurelio Lampredi had been doing that year. These improvements included a more efficient intake and an upgraded distribution system taking the power to 210 horsepower. Most of the cars used the old tube steel space frame chassis. But some of them were released using the new tube of soccer, which was a semi monocoque, using a tube that was a, a, um, a trellis frame, which was actually a little bit lighter but a lot more rigid. A total of 21 225S sports cars were built, all of them right hand drive, which was very common for race cars of the era. There were 14 Vignali Spiders, 6 Vignali Berlinettas, and there was one Barchetta, which was bodied by Carrozzeria Touring. But by then Ferrari was losing interest in them as a coach builder and turning their attention elsewhere. All right guys, well I've had to film this a couple of times now uh, because the uh, microphone has been giving me uh, grief. Mrs. Jeff is out so I'm doing the outro by myself today. Um, basically the issue for those of you who are interested who are uh, have been watching for a while, know that I have issues with the microphone. The trouble is, is that I use these Rode Filmmaker microphones, which are really great, um, a little lapel mic, but I carry this in my pocket all day, and the moving backwards and forwards of the top of the uh, this microphone, it keeps breaking the wires inside. I've tried taping them up and changing things, and it keeps dying. I'm changed over back to the shotgun microphone, as you can see here, so the sound is probably not as good as these, but I just... I'm giving up. These things, it cost me a hundred bucks every time this microphone breaks. Uh, it's just not worthwhile. Um, it's not as good, but that's how it is. As for uh, what I've done today, I'm pretty happy with um, the uh, the progress. I haven't finished those, the, uh, the cover for the oil line and the brake mask cylinders, etc. But that uh, center bar, I know it does hang lower and then if anything hits, it's going to sort of hit harder. I could, when I'm doing the, uh, the the bracing on the subframe, when I got it on the rotisserie, I could box it in and angle and, and slope it down, but then I don't get that aerodynamic benefit of the gurney flap. So, um, yeah, the jury, jury's still out on that. I'll, uh, I've got a little while to decide on what I'm going to do there. But um, overall, that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure, if you have... Uh, if you can like and subscribe and do all that sort of stuff, join us uh, on Patreon and get to watch videos a day early, ad-free, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. See you guys.